Hey guys, this is Mitch with FinePoint CGI, and today we're gonna to make a touch screen based camera controller inside of Godot. So we're gonna go through the process of creating panning. We're going to set up pinch to zoom so you can zoom in and out. And we're going to set up the rotation gesture where you take your two fingers and you kind of move them in a circle and it rotates your scene. And we're gonna talk about some of the complications that can come with that. So that's what I have in store for you guys today. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first thing we need to do is we need to add a camera. Now I know what you're thinking, hey, uh, Mitch, why do you have additional stuff here? Normally you start from scratch. Well, it's really hard to tell if you have a pan camera, a zoom and a rotate, if you don't have any kind of tile map to work with just to see how it you know, is reacting. So I already pre-built a tile map here just so that we had something to look at. Now, if you guys want this tile map, I have a link to it in the description below and you can go ahead and download it for free, though there is a paid version for like a premium version of it. So the first thing we have to do is we have to add in our camera. So we're gonna right click, add in a child node, add in a camera 2D like that. And you'll see that we have this really nice outline like this and that signifies that we have our camera. Now for us to do a camera controller, we are going to need to actually add in some kind of script. So we're gonna right click our camera 2D, attach a script. We're gonna go ahead and name it touch camera controller. And you'll see it extends camera 2D and we're gonna need to put a bunch of variables. Now I wanna make this code as flexible as possible so that way you guys can use it for your future projects without needing to actually come in here and adjust this camera. So what we'll do is we're going to hit at export var and we'll need to set up a few small variables here. First things first, our zoom speed and we're gonna make that into a type float. And we're gonna make that equal to 0 0.1. Then I'm gonna copy and paste that three times. And I'm gonna say pan underscore speed. And then I'm going to change the name of this one to rotate, rotation speed. And I'm gonna set my pan speed to 1.0. And I'm going to do the same thing for my rotation speed. Then I'm going to go ahead and export out a couple more vars. So I'm gonna say export var can underscore pan, and I'm gonna make that a type bool. And I'm gonna copy and paste that three more times. Can pan, can zoom, and can rotate. Because we wanna make this as flexible as humanly possible, I wanna make sure that we have all of these variables exported. That way we can actually come in and just say, hey, I don't want my camera to pan, I don't want my camera to zoom, or I don't want my camera to rotate. We can actually just shut that off through code. So now we're gonna to have to detect our touches. So we need to use input to do that. So we'll say func underscore input event. Now that's overriding our input event. So that way we can actually use it for our different events. Input runs every time you do any type of input. So if you touch the screen, this is going to fire off. And we take in an input event of some description and we need to determine what that input event is. So we have to actually check for that, right? We can't just say, oh, hey, you know, the characters or the, the players dragging on the screen without knowing that that event actually happened. It could be anything. It could be that they touched the screen, like they actually just clicked on the screen. It could be that they dragged on the screen. It could be that they clicked their mouse or they hit some kind of controller button, right? So we don't want to just run random code. We want to check to make sure that's the correct stuff. So we'll say if event is input event, you can see we have a bunch of different input events and I'm going to check for screen touch and I'm going to pass for right now. And I'm going to check also for if our event is a input event screen drag as well. Now, once we have these two, we have our ability to touch the screen. So we tap the screen or like put our finger on the screen and then we have the ability to drag. So if we touch the screen and then drag, this event fires off, okay? So part of good code design is making sure that your code is encapsulated. So it's separated out, if that makes sense. You wanna have good separation of your code so that's easy to read. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, when an input event screen touch happens, I'm going to call a function called handle touch, and I'm going to pass in my event. And then I'm going to come down here and make that function. So func handle underscore touch like that. So the first thing that we have to do when we're handling our touch is that we need to see if the event is pressed, right? So when you touch something, you can either touch it or let off. And if you let off, the handle touch will still fire, right? And that can give you a good way of keeping track of how many fingers are on your screen. So what we'll do is we'll say if event dot pressed, then we need to actually keep track of our touch points. So what we'll do is we'll create a dictionary up here. So we'll say var touch underscore points is of type dictionary is equal to brackets, okay? And then we'll add this touch event to our dictionary. So we'll say touch points event.index is equal to event.position. And I know you're wondering, hey, Mitch, how do you know that this is actually a thing, right? Well, all we have to do is if we throw a breakpoint here, we go to project, project settings, and we type mouse, and we go to input devices and emulate touch from mouse. If we run this and we save this as our test scene.tscn, if we click, you'll see that we get our handle touch event. We do a little breakpoint here, and then we can take a look at our event. So you can see our event right here. You can see we have an index, we have a position, we have whether or not it's pressed, whether or not it's a double tap, and then we have some additional parameters here that we don't care about. So what I'm doing is I'm getting a hold of my index and I'm getting a hold of my position. So I'm basically saying, hey, create a dictionary that has this index that has these positions. That way I know that that finger that I touched is index zero. So if, if one finger is touching, I know it's index zero. If two fingers are touching, I have index zero and index one with their two separate positions. Basically how we are pulling back that data, if that makes sense. So now all we have to do, once we add our touch points, we have to handle what happens if we let off of our touch points. So we'll say else touch points dot erase event dot index. And what that'll do is that, that'll pull out that touch event from our dictionary. Okay, so that way we can determine if we put two fingers down and we let off one, we can now have just that one touch point. So now that we know what our handle touch happens, how do we handle when we do a drag? Well, we could just type handle underscore drag and we could pass in our event like that. And we can come down here and say func handle underscore drag like that. And if we want to, we could pass in our event as well, which we probably should. And we can also cast it as an input event screen drag. And we could actually do that up here as well. And that would give us uh, auto completion as well. So input event screen touch. And there we go. Once we have our handle drag, we could basically say, hey, let's get our touch points um, event index and then let's set our event index. So touch points event dot index is equal to event dot position. If we touch a second button or we do something weird, we keep track of our dictionary so that our dictionary is not messed up. Because every once in a while I notice that there's a slight bug where, you know, if you touch and then you are dragging, but then you also touch the screen again, it can also, it can cause issues with your dictionary. You can get it out of range for your dictionary. So I just have that as like a safety safe. And also it keeps track of your event position as well. So if you have one finger stationary and you move your other finger while you're dragging, it keeps track of that as well. So it handles both of those cases. So I'm going to check if my touch points dot size is equal to one. And if it is, then I'm gonna check if I can pan. And if I can pan, then offset minus equals event dot relative multiplied by my pan speed. And that'll basically allow us to pan if we have it set up. So in theory, 
if I click on my camera, I check can pan and I hit play, in theory, this should work. And there we go. You can see that I can pan my camera. Awesome. So now how can I zoom? Unfortunately with zooming, we're actually going to have to get our phone. So make sure you grab your phone and you plug it in and you set up your Android export or iOS. If you're doing iOS in my case, I already have it all set up. If you haven't, I have a tutorial on setting up Android and I'll link it in the description. If I remember that I need to do that. So once we have this, how can we zoom? Well, zooming is actually not super hard. We're going to go up to our handle touch. And basically what we'll do is we'll say if touch points dot size is equal to two, then var touch point underscore positions is equal to touch points dot values like that. And once we get our values, all we need to do is we need to get our start distance. Okay. And we need to get our start zoom. So when you're handling, um, zooming, you need to have a start distance and an end distance. Okay. And basically you need to get the distance between two objects or two fingers, right? So touch point zero and touch point one, you need to get the distance between those two fingers and that'll be your start distance. And then once we move our fingers, away from each other, we're going to take the difference between those two distances and then apply it to our camera zoom factor. If that makes sense, it'll probably makes more sense as I code it. So first things first, we need to create a variable up here. So we'll say var start underscore distance. And while we're up here, let's go ahead and do the same thing for our zoom. So we'll say var start underscore zoom. And while we're up here, we might as well just do our angles as well for our rotation. So var start angle and var current angle. That way these are just handled for us and it's just done. Now, if we come down here, we could basically just say start distance is equal to touch point positions zero dot distance to touch point positions one. And then I'm going to put a space here because we're going to need to do our rotation, but I'll get to that in a minute. Start underscore zoom is equal to zoom. And then we'll need to check else if touch points dot size is under two, then we can basically just say start distance is equal to zero. And once we have that, then we can start our actual handling of our zoom down here. So if our touch point size is equal to one, then we can do our panning. If else, if our touch points dot size is equal to two, then we can basically just start doing our either rotation or zoom. So First, we need to get our touch point position. So var is equal to touch points dot values. And then we need to get our current distance. So var current underscore distance is equal to touch point positions zero dot distance to touch point positions one. We're going to leave an empty space here so we can do our rotation and then we'll say var zoom factor is equal to start distance divided by current distance. And then we'll check if we can zoom, then we will say zoom is equal to start zoom divided by zoom factor like that. And then this will work great, but 
personally, I would like to limit my zoom because if your user can zoom in as far as they want and zoom out as far as they want, that's going to cause a lot of problems. So we need to kind of create an upper and lower bounds of what we can do. So I'm going to do that real quick. So we'll say funk limit underscore zoom new zoom if new zoom dot x is less than 0 0.01 in my case i'm going to say zoom dot x is equal to 0 0.01 if new zoom dot y is less than 0 0.01 is equal to 0 0.1 if new zoom dot y is greater than 10 greater than 10 then zoom dot x is equal to 10 and finally if new zoom dot y is greater than 10 then zoom dot y is equal to 10. And I also made a mistake there, so we'll change that to that. And there we go. And then we can just limit our zoom right down here in our else if. So we can just come in here and say limit zoom, and we'll just pass in our zoom. And there we go, easily enough. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and export this out to my phone so I can show you guys really quickly. So we're gonna click on this little guy here. We're gonna click on Google and I will select my current scene as my main scene. Now you'll see that we have our Android stuff running. If I click and pan, or if I touch and pan, you'll see it pans. If I do two, well, not a whole lot happens. So that means we must have something broken. So let's take a look at our deploy with remote debug and let's see what's going on. Oh, you know what? I did not turn on Zoom, that's why. So hit play. And then if we use two uh, fingers, there we go. We can now zoom. Awesome, easy enough. Now you might notice that when you zoom in, it can get a little squirrely on you. And when you zoom out, it's a lot more responsive. So something that we could do to kind of level that out is if we come up to our pan speed and we divide it by our zoom.x and that'll normalize our stuff out a little bit and it should make it a lot better if that makes sense. So once we run this, you'll see real quick, if we pan like so, you can see how it looks. If we zoom in and we pan, you'll see that it keeps that consistency. And that's what we're looking for is that consistency to work. And there we go. All right, now let's add rotation. Rotation is actually relatively easy. I already left spaces to where we can just throw our stuff in. So all we have to do to do rotation is you need to say var current underscore angle is equal to get angle touch point position zero comma touch point position one. But you'll notice that get angle doesn't exist. Well, that's because we haven't created it yet. So let's come down here and create that. So funk get underscore angle. And we'll pass in position one comma position two. And now here's where the magic happens. So var delta is equal to P2 minus P1. And then we're going to return our F mod bracket bracket a tan two parentheses delta dot y comma delta dot x plus pi comma two multiplied by pi. So basically all this is doing is it's calculating the angle of a 2D vector. So the delta x and the delta y relative to the po to the positive x axis and rotates that angle by uh, 180 degrees and make sure and it makes sure that the result falls within the range of our two pi so which two pi is basically a full circle in radians and then that basically just tells you how to get the angle of your rotation if that makes sense i know it's hard to explain but it's trigonometry and i hate it so that's just how i do it 
Um, so once we have this, our current angle is done. So now all we have to do is just check in here. If can underscore rotate, then we can basically just say rotation minus equals our current angle minus our start angle multiplied by our rotation speed. And then start angle is equal to current angle. Now this would work, but it's gonna start us off at zero every single time. And the reason why, now this would work, but it's gonna start us off at zero every time we start this project. So what we need to do is up here, we need to actually get our start angle. So we'll say start angle is equal to get angle and grab our touch point position right here, touch point position zero and one, and there we go. So that way we're not starting at zero because that can cause some problem. And now all we have to do is click can rotate and then hit play and play. And it's gonna run it on my phone real quick. So now you can see we can pan, we can zoom, and we can not rotate. Okay, so I figured out what was going on. So you can see here I have ignore rotation. If we shut that off and we hit play, you'll see that that should solve our problem. So now if we zoom in, we can now rotate. You can see we can zoom in, we can pan, and we can rotate. Now you'll notice if we rotate our camera that our pan is completely broken. So what does that mean? That means we have to actually solve that problem, right? There's an issue with how we're calculating our pan for it to handle a rotation. So to fix our rotation movement problem, what we need to do is we need to actually come up here to our can pan section and we basically need to set an offset. So what we'll do is we'll say var pan underscore vector is equal to event dot relative dot rotated. And then we need to pass in a rotation. And what we'll do is we'll just pass in our rotation. So rotation multiplied by pan speed. And then all we have to do is take this guy down here and say pan vector. Now, if you want to, you could just take this guy, copy it and paste it, and then get rid of this. And technically that would work as well. It might be just a little bit messier if you're not into this style of coding, but we'll do that. We'll hit play. We'll run it to our project here. We'll pan left and right, up and down. You'll see it works. And then we'll rotate it, pan left, right, up, down. And you'll see that that solved our problem. So at this point, we have ourselves a really useful touch-based camera controller. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Hey, you know, if you dislike this video, go ahead and hit that dislike button because I'm here to make content for you guys. This video was a viewer suggested video. So if you have any suggestions, please leave it in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to add it to my list of tutorials that I have to make. And hey, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below or hit me up on Discord, links in the description and anyone there will be more than happy to help you out with any issues you might have. But that is all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you all next time. Thanks.